to speed things up a little bit and give you more time on your practical in the workshop, we'd like you to watch this video before entry to do your practical. You will be making a clock using a variety of tools in the workshop and this strip heater. You will need to grab an apron and grab some material from the middle shelf of this trolley. There are others on the top and bottom which may be useful. You don't need to take these yet because they're not needed till later in the lesson. Get your name on it straight away so you don't lose it or get it mixed up with someone else's. Check your material to correct size. Width should be about 100 and 210 long. Check the corners by peeling back a bit of protection layer to make sure you got the right colour but don't remove the layer altogether. Check it square. If you see a little bit of light shine underneath it, it needs squaring up. Square it up by holding the tri-square tight against the plastic and mark a line. Flick it over just like I showed you there, keeping the stock against the same edge and mark a line again at the other end. Keep it tight to the end because you're just going to sand off a little bit using the linisher. Make sure you put your eye protection on and keep it flat on the table. To switch it on, it's the green button. If it doesn't work, twist the emergency stop and try again. It won't take very long, three or four seconds should do it and don't take the line away. Flip it round, do the same on the other side. Remember you have to push more on one side than the other to get it nice and square and leave the line. Okay, I want to show you something. The nose on this clock is very long. So what we're going to do is have a little packing piece which you will put in at the end. Okay, personalizing the shape of your clock. The model, this will be helpful for marking out and you will need to use a pen to mark all your lines. First of all, the hole for the clock mechanism. Square that off at the top, then join diagonals and mark your center point. Mark the bend line at the bottom. That should be about 50 up and use your tri-square again, tight against the side of the credit to make sure the line's square. Felt tip or a pen works best. Use a broken line for the bend line, hash lines for waist and a little cross for the center. Make sure you're accurate and precise and take your time and do it neatly. Stencils are also useful. Next up, the coping saw. This is how you use it. It's ideal for cutting curves, acrylic and internal cuts on all types of material, wood and plastic. Can't be used on metal. So, pop it in your vise. You'll need to get it as low as you can. And when you're using the coping saw, you can uh, put your finger where you're gonna start off. That keeps it in the right place. Keep the saw pointing straight in front of you. Try and not move it right or left like that. And don't move it up or down. Just go forward and back, keeping the saw straight and level right in front of you at all times. That's the best way to use it. And then what you'll need to do is loosen the vise, move it up a little bit, and then you can keep on sawing another little bit. Now you might find it does this. It won't cut any further. And if the frame gets stuck like that, what you need to do is grab the handle and the pin at the same time, just like that, and loosen off the saw, twisting the handle. You can then adjust the pins and tighten the handle back up again, holding the pin at the same time. Now the pins must be nice and level, just like I'm showing you there. They must be pointing the same way before you can carry on. Now look, I can cut with the saw in this position and the frame is out of the way. All right, again, forward and back, nice and gently, keep it nice and straight, not right or left, not up and down, dead straight, dead level, and remove the little piece. Make sure you leave the line behind you all the way around. Tied it up with a half round file. If it's a curve, you can use flat file or round file, square file, or three-sided file, depending on the shape you're trying to cut out. And cross file first, that's forward and back. And after a little while, you can do a little bit of draw filing, which just tidies it up there at the end. Okay, feel free to do any shape you want there. You don't have to copy this shape. Whatever you do, look at the left side. Cut as close to the line as you can, and look at the right side. Get it nice and neat with the file afterwards, and you should still see the line there. I'm just fixed it a wee bit, but the line's still actually there. I'm just making it a bit brighter so you can see it. Don't go over the line, okay? That's very important. All right, the pillar drill. Now you could use this before you do any cutting to avoid the cues. Um, 9.5 drill bit, that should be selected and already tightened in the chuck, but you will need to clamp your work down. I'm using the drill bit here to hold it in the right position while I get the clamp on. Give it a squeeze down there, and that's it. It's a speed clamp and it's clamped. Do check it is firmly held before you start up the drill. Then okay, you're ready to go. Keep on drilling nice and gently until you start to see little bits of wood coming through like that. That means you've gone all the way through it so you can stop. Pull the trigger there to release the clamp and you're off to the next stage.
You should already know how to clean the edges of acrylic using various grades of glass paper from rough to smooth and the polishing machine. Making sure you hold it down around the underbelly at four o'clock to do the edge. Only do one half, spin it around the other half. Polish up with the wider, cleaner wheel. That's the buffer. You will need to add some polishing compound once or twice during the lesson. Next up, how to bend the acrylic. One bend should do it, but if you want to be a little bit more fancy like this one here, you can do that. But I would advise you just to keep it simple and uh, you will need to use the strip heater, sometimes called the line bender. And uh, don't forget, it's hot, so be careful. Do make sure you try and get your corners nice and crisp. And the strip heater sometimes looks a little bit like this in some of the other classrooms. When using the strip heater, you might have to pull this little guard up and slide it underneath. Line your line up with the line of the strip heater, just like I'm showing you there. But if you put your head straight over it, you'll see it's not actually in line. It's about three mil below it. So slide it up just like that. Did you see that? Much better. Be careful when you're doing that. I'd say three minutes. Sometimes it's one minute. Depends how hot it is. You don't need that. Just slide it out after a couple of minutes and it should bend really easily. Get the angle right. You don't want it too far back. It'll look ridiculous. And don't let it too far forward either. That's awful. And that's awful because it'll just fall forward like that. So a little uh, slope back. There are some, some already done around the room to give you an idea. We should know what looks good and what doesn't look good. Right, last job. Once you've done that, you can start assembling it. There's your packer. Pop that through. Pop a washer on it. Just like that. Put the nut on it. Just like that. And grab a pair of pliers and just hold the nut and do the screwing on the other side by twisting the clock mechanism around. That saves you scratching the face of the clock. Okay. When it's nice and tight and square, you can start putting the hands on. Now, try and leave the plastic on as long as you can because you could scratch your clock face. The hands go on with the short one first and you just pop it on, slide it on there. It, there, it does a right way around. Look, it needs to go with that bit at the bottom. So the smooth bit at the top. See what I'm showing you there? Just slide that on nice and gently. They fit perfectly easily. And the second hand, now be careful that it must go dead center over the pin and push that on. You need to put a battery on it to get it work. We don't have them, but we have one for you to test it. You can always see does it spin by rotating it at the back. We'll need to put any accessories or stickers on before you fit the clock parts. Time to tidy up and just make sure you put everything back the way you found it. Keep the workshop nice and neat. Don't just tidy your area up, make sure you tidy everybody's area up. Leave it like that. Don't forget to watch the other video that has some health and safety information and ask your teacher if you're unsure about anything. Thank you.